that she's had several, and she hasn't been successful. So that does affect her chances. Whether it is corneas have to be removed from the donor within 12 hours of death. <coughs> Additional problems affecting positive outcome may include inadequate patient <coughs> compliance, which means they don't obey the rules the doctor told them how to care for their eyes. Could be infection, poor quality tissue, so the donor's cornea wasn't that great either, and the survival of the graft and surgical skills. So it depends on how well the surgeon does as well. So those are some of the factors. Now, moving into part two. Lucy grows up, she gets married, has a child, and just, even though she's learned how to live blind, she just really, really, really wants to see the child. And she wants to see the expressions on her child's face, and she wants to see her grow up. So because of that, she starts to think about it and goes to talk to her doctor again. And then he tells her about this new procedure, and she gets kind of excited about it. Now, <coughs> we need to talk a little bit more about the procedure for cornea transplants. We answered some of the questions as to why some of these fail, but let's get into it in a little more detail. 90% of the cornea transplants are initially successful. Notice that that word is emphasized. But there are a lot of them that eventually fail. So even though you might be able to see for a while, a lot of them start to fail after time. So cornea transplants may fail if the patient rejects the cornea. Infection occurs and scarring forms. Yeah, question. So Dr. Timmick, to what extent will like cornea can be like damaged? Because uh, I, I can kind of like relate to that story. Like when, when like Lucy, like, you know, he cornea cornea the of the fire. I remember back home, good thing, uh, you know, uh, I still have my vision. Well, what happened was I, I, I worked in a restaurant, so I just like turned on the gas, it's like, sh but there's like, the, the fire was like on the, on the bottom of it. So I, right after it, so the fire like, boom, like right in front of my eyes, but good thing it didn't, you know, to what extent, like, is it ha does it have to be like, huge fire, you know, but my, my bros and like, my, they're like, you know, so your, yeah, your eyebrows were yeah. singed, so like, you look like the lady in surgery yeah, with those eyelashes. eyelashes. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't have to have my surgery for my eyelashes. <laughs> they grew back. Uh, yeah, um, well, the, the answer to that is uh, it obviously has to be severe. It has to come in contact. Maybe you closed your eyes. I don't know. Or maybe it just wasn't as severe as the explosion that she was exposed to. But like it says, if she... If those cornea were really singed or burned, and especially <coughs> the corner part called the limbus that we're going to talk about in just a minute, that can cause really serious damage. So I guess you were fortunate. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I guess. Okay, so in some patients, such as those that have experienced severe damage from chemical burns, heat, and other diseases, failure may be due to the inability of the donor cornea to replace epithelial cells that are sloughed off during normal eye activity. So, remember, cornea are constantly replacing the top layer, that epithelial layer, uh, using stem cells to do that. Now, the cornea itself can reproduce, uh, replace those cells on its own for a while. So, if you get a donor <coughs> cornea, uh, it can do that on its own for a while. But after after a little while, your eye, with this thing called the limbus, has to start producing its own stem cells, uh, or else it will fail. So in these patients, the corneal limbus, like I said, this little uh, structure in the corner <coughs> of the eye contains stem cells, is damaged. And if you damage that one, then your source of stem cells is drastically reduced. Even a cornea transplant that initially appears, appears successful will be fruitless if the patient lacks the stem cells to maintain healthy activity. So the success rate of limbal stem cell transplantation, so not just the cornea, but actually going in and getting the limbus from somebody else and transplanting that into your eye, uh, the success rate drops down to about 50%. And that's Lucy's situation. <coughs> so we've been talking all about stem cells and 